right now we're just going to kind of do a brief summary here um, to review the things that we have learned. So SIRS. What is SIRS? So this is Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. It is a widespread, exaggerated in inflammatory response to some sort of bodily insult, but it is not specific to infection. Not all patients with SIRS have sepsis, but all patients with sepsis started with SIRS, right? So very important to remember here that SIRS is a, a constellation of findings. It is a warning sign to us that there is badness inside, but it doesn't let us know what that badness is, okay? So very important to investigate patients who have SIRS, do the full workup, advocate for treatment and, and you know further exploration, but know that SIRS does not immediately mean infection or sepsis. Then we have sepsis. Sepsis is SIRS combined with a known or suspected source of infection and organ dysfunction. So if we know that we have that source of infection or we suspect that we could uh, and we are showing signs of organ dysfunction, we are now calling this sepsis. Organ dysfunction, how do we, how do we uh, evaluate that? We should assess organ dysfunction with SOFA or QSOFA tools. Remember, QSOFA is what we would use for the quick triage, the rapid assessment. That's why it's called quick SOFA. And then SOFA is the more in-depth that gives us a very detailed clinical picture of what's going on with their organ dysfunction. Now, septic shock is the worst of all of these, right? This one is very, very lethal. So septic shock is hemodynamic instability in a septic patient who has already received intravascular volume repletion, fluid resuscitation, that is septic shock. And it's bad, right? Um, so how? what are our two criteria here? Patients with septic shock will have a MAP that is less than 65 without vasopressor support. So that means without putting them on any sort of vasopressors, they cannot maintain a MAP greater than 65. And they will have lactic acidosis, which is marked by a serum lactate level greater than two millimoles per liter. All of these things are really scary, can be really detrimental, can be deadly, but because you have taken the time to educate yourself as to the findings, the, the, the assessments, the interventions, you know, what to look for, the important target data that we should be aiming for, you are now better prepared as a clinician, as a healthcare professional to care for these patients. And I really want to empower you to be willing to speak up when you see a patient you believe is have meeting those SIRS criteria or meeting uh, criteria for sepsis, septic shock, to verbalize that and advocate for these various types of interventions, whatever may be appropriate for your facility, like a sepsis alert or code sepsis, whatever that may be. You don't need to wait for somebody else to say, this is sepsis, do these things. You should feel that you have the autonomy to go to a provider and say, I believe this patient is experiencing sepsis for these reasons. What do you think? Can you come see them? Can I get some orders? Whatever that may be. But being armed with the information is going to make you that much better of a healthcare professional. And I'm, I'm really impressed with you for taking the time to do this course. These are my references if you want any more information. There is so much information on SIRS, sepsis, and septic shock out there. And like I said, I did link here um, the Singer et al. This is the very, very long um, JAMA article, you know, that actually defines what sepsis and septic shock is. Um, so if you are interested in more information and getting into the nitty gritty, I would very highly recommend that you use that DOI to check it out for yourself. Now, it's time for you to review everything. So I have just a few more questions for you to test your knowledge over everything you've learned today about SIRS, sepsis, and septic shock. Question one. A patient weighing 154 pounds is in need of aggressive fluid resuscitation for sepsis. How many milliliters of IV fluids should this patient receive as a bolus? Round to the nearest whole number. The answer is 2,100 milliliters. So the recommended fluid bolus for resuscitation for a patient experiencing sepsis is 30 milliliters per kilogram. 154 pounds converts to 70 kilograms and 70 kilograms times 30 milliliters per kilogram equals 2,100 milliliters. Question number two. 
A 38-year-old patient presents to the emergency room with dysuria. Given the following assessment findings, does the patient meet SIRS criteria? A pulse of 98 beats per minute, respirations of 21 breaths per minute, a blood pressure of 102 over 60, a temperature of 36.3 degrees Celsius, and a white blood cell count of 3,200. The answer is yes. The patient meets two of the SIRS criteria, a respiratory rate over 20 breaths per minute and a white blood cell count under 4,000. Question three, does a patient with a positive SIRS criteria and the following assessment findings meet the definition of organ dysfunction using QSOFA? A pulse of 109 beats per minute, respirations of 30 breaths per minute, a blood pressure of 90 over 57, and a Glasgow Coma Scale score of 15. The answer is yes. Two or more of the QSOFA criteria must be met in order for the patient to have organ dysfunction. This patient has a respiratory rate over 22 breaths per minute and a systolic blood pressure under 100. Number four, lactic acidosis is present when a patient has a serum lactate level greater than how many millimoles per liter? The answer is two. We invite you to subscribe to our channel and share a link with your classmates and friends in nursing school. And if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and let us know what you found to be particularly helpful.